Welcome back to the Intentional Apostolic Podcast. I'm Melissa, your host. And first of all, Happy New Year. It is 2023 at the time of this recording. So hopefully you guys are having a fabulous new year or, you know, what part of the year you're listening. It's fabulous at that point. And I know that here on the Intentional Apostolic, we have and will be covering more spiritual topics. However, today on this episode, I really want to focus in on the practical side of things. As much as we are called to be spirit-led and desire to dig into the deep things of God, we must also be stewards of the natural things in life. God is very, very clear in scripture that we should be and, you know, strive to be good and faithful and effective stewards. I won't read the entire parable of the talents, but I do want to read Matthew twenty-five twenty-three, which says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. If you want to be trusted with more, then you're going to need to master maximizing what you have now. Also, the psalmist said in Psalm 90 verse 12, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. We're responsible for being aware of time so that we can effectively apply ourselves where it matters. And one more verse before we dig into the principles um, well, actually a couple verses. Luke fourteen twenty eight through 30 says, For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, less haply, after he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it? that all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. There are going to be things in life that you need to consider if it's worth how much it's going to cost you in time, in money, in physical, emotional, and spiritual resources, and then decide if it's really worth it to you. We want to be able to say we have finished the race, not that we didn't steward ourselves and our time and only got, you know, halfway to where we should have. I've said this before, but you need to hear it again. Time is the currency of your life. So what kind of future are you buying for yourself? You need to let that sink in and think about it for a while. Time is the currency of your life. So you need to think about what type of future you're buying for yourself. Now, I do believe in being as real as possible So before we get into everything, I need to preface this entire conversation and tell you that I'm not perfect. I know, it's shocking. I haven't completely mastered everything I'm about to talk about. I know, also shock, shock, shock. I've had more failures and things that I've fallen short on that, you know, we just don't have time to cover today. And I want to say that as much as I failed... I'm also the product of how much what I'm about to talk about works and how much it's helped me personally grow. I used to struggle with consistency all the time. And when I say that, it's not an exaggeration. The people that know me well can attest to this. Honestly, it's something that I have grown a ton on. And by the grace of God, I will continue to grow in that area. So I want to ask you a question. When it comes to goal planning, time management, etc. Have you ever noticed that some people seem to get like astronomical amounts done or definitely way more than everyone else and it seems like they just like have 36 or 250 hours in every single day? Just the sheer amount that they get done leaves you scratching your head sounds familiar right i'm gonna let you in on a secret that's not really a secret they aren't magicians or superhumans even though it might seem that way they've just gotten smarter and more disciplined with their time and priorities 
I definitely don't have all the answers, but here are some of the things that have helped me and I believe will help you too. If anything I've talked about is something that you've already applied, kudos to you, but I know that there are a ton of people that are going to listen to this that they're going to need this. All right, so let's talk about the time management side of things first. So the first thing you need to do is you need to plan your week every single time. This might seem obvious, but it's shocking how many people don't plan at all, let alone properly. It's kind of like Dave Ramsey says about your money. If you don't assign your dollar something specific of where it should get spent, it's just going to get spent wherever. And the same is true with your time. If you don't plan and assign your time to specific things, then your time will just go here and there, wherever, and not really get put on important things or the things that you say you value. Honestly, where you spend your time reveals where your heart is. Obviously, there may be some things that you don't have control over and, you know, you don't get to choose. But when you're the one making the decision where you're spending your time, you need to make sure you're setting yourself up for success. A very simple way that I plan my week is I usually sit down on either like a weekend Saturday, Sunday, or sometimes it's Monday morning if I've been out traveling or had something that kind of skewed my schedule outside of what it would normally be. Okay, so when I sit down, I write down like every single task that I need to get done. Not just like, you know, the work projects or um, big things, but a lot of times I'll also write down little things like, oh, I need to drop off books at the library or... um, write someone a letter or just anything that like you don't need to forget and depending on how disciplined or um, easily you remember things I know for the people that are kind of on the ADHD spectrum and stuff writing more things down is going to help you a ton so don't think that any task is too mundane to go ahead and put it on the schedule so once I've gotten like everything listed out that I need to do that week. Then I cut and paste the tasks into specific days. So I usually just use the notes app on my phone, make the massive list, and then I'll uh, make like little headers, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then cut and paste that entire massive list into the particular days that I'm going to do those tasks. So I do want to say that sometimes life happens and like you don't get to 100% of everything that you have on your list for that particular day. That's fine. You just move it and reschedule it. And I want to say that because not getting something done because you need to reschedule it is different than not getting something done because you're procrastinating or shirking on it. There's a difference and I would say 99% sure you know which is which and what's happening. So if you need to reschedule it, that's fine. But definitely don't allow yourself to procrastinate on it. Do it on the day you said you're going to do it. All right. So the next thing I'm going to suggest is plan your day the night before. Right now I'm using an app suggested by my friend Cam, shout out to you, um, named Structured, that kind of allows you to put all the different tasks you need to and assign a time to it, etc. Um, however, you don't necessarily need a fancy app to do this. What you do need to do is make sure that, one, you're looking over that particular day, upcoming day. So like on Monday night, you're going to look at everything on Tuesday's list from the weekly list. Look at all those tasks. Make sure that you check your calendar for like any upcoming events and just go through what you're going to be doing the following day. That way you make sure that you're not missing anything important and that you go ahead and outline the chunks of time where you're going to be spending on what. And, you know, if you're already working a job, then 
you know, some of your time is already outlined as your work hours and your commute, but there's still plenty of time that you can maximize. That way you get the best possible amount of excellent things done. Okay, next thing. Work smarter, not harder. I know this is, you know, like, oh yeah, work smarter, not harder. It's so obvious, but is it? You know, if something isn't working, you need to change it instead of thinking that it's just magically going to snap into place or like, oh, it's just going to work someday. Now, this isn't referring to, like, things that take time to develop, like, a fitness habit. It's more, you know, the things that if you're not a morning person, then forcing yourself to build a prayer habit in the morning when you already don't have a prayer life most likely isn't going to be very effective. You need to recognize your tendencies and, like, your innate nature and plan accordingly so you don't shoot yourself in the foot by working against yourself. So, you know, you have to have some self-awareness to make this effective, but definitely recognize your strengths and your weaknesses and plan that so that you can be a lot more effective. Okay, next thing, habit stack. I'm going to try to explain this as simply as I can. If you want to know more about habit stacking, you can definitely read some books or Google it and probably get some more succinct additional information. Basically, habit stacking is when you take an existing habit and add an an extra item or like extra step or extra habit to that existing habit. For example, if you take a shower every single day, then you could habit stack that with cleaning the bathroom. So, like, before you go to take your shower every day, you would clean the bathroom and like that would be a habit stack. Or another example is like you take out the trash immediately when you get home from work each night. Basically, you get a habit and then you can stack another habit. Once you get that down, you can add another one um, to it. You can have habit stacks, two, three, four, five, um, like you know, taking the bathroom and taking a shower, you could, you know, clean the bathroom, take a shower, and then start a load of laundry. That's three items. But this isn't just for housework. Habit stacking is something that can be used in pretty much any area of life. One of the areas that I use it is at my church for media. When I get to church for a service, the first thing I do is make sure that the door is unlocked, that way everybody can get in. The next thing I do is turn on all the sound system, all our um, recording software, all that side of stuff. And then um, once I'm done getting the sound stuff up and ready, I start in on the media stuff. I boot up the media software, load the song set from the worship team. And then the next thing I do is head to my pastor's office to get the scripture lists, titles, and whatever else is needed from whoever's preaching, teaching, speaking that day. And I also check if there's, you know, anything else for the service that needs to be covered. So I kind of have this habit stack that I sequentially go through things for a service. That way nothing is missed. So you can use this to kind of automate or um, make sure that you don't miss things that need to be done on a regular basis basis by grouping the tasks together. So the next thing that you can do is learn to multitask effectively. And I should preface this by saying you need to know when you can and can't multitask. If you have a commute to and from work, then using that time for audiobooks or podcasts or whatever is an amazing multitask execution. I know some people who listen to audiobooks when they clean the house, when they work out, or whatever. But it probably isn't going to be effective if you try to talk with your friends and listen to an audiobook. 
or, you know, really any task that requires like the language and auditory processing side of things. Audiobooks and working like physically with your hands or your body is honestly a great way of getting work done while also working on yourself. Another type of multitasking is when you double up on purpose. For example, one way that I found to be helpful for me personally is to spend quality time with my siblings by going to the gym together with them. So I will go work out and take one of them with me. This means that I'm keeping my commitment to being healthier while also, you know, spending quality time with someone who's important to me. You don't necessarily have to do that specifically, but I would definitely take an evaluation of your life and see if you can find things that you could effectively layer together and, you know, get two things done simultaneously and do both of them well. All right, the next tip that I would have for you is batch your life. Okay, so for anyone that lives in like the creative world or like social media management, etc kind of like I do you're probably familiar with batching tasks basically it's where you do a whole bunch of the same thing at one time so you save yourself time throughout like the rest of the week or month or whatever well you can also do that in your personal life those of you who meal plan and prep that would be one area that you're batching your life Probably one of the most helpful batch tasks that I have implemented in my personal life is my clothing. (laughs) So what I will do is either on a weekend or like early in the week, usually right after I do like my weekly schedule, I look at all my meetings, travel, appointments, responsibilities, And then I set out my clothing outfits for the entire week. So like all my church outfits, work outfits, Zoom call outfits, if I'm like recording content, all of that, all at once for the entire week. So I'm not a morning person. And so by reducing the amount of decisions that I have to make each morning is really helpful for me personally to get ready quicker and I realized that one of the friction points, which we'll talk about in a moment, was that like I would wake up in the morning and then like I would be looking and it would be hard for me to make a decision because my brain wasn't ready to do that at that time in the morning. So that brings us to our next point, reduce your friction points. So like I said before, this goes hand in hand with batching your life. And most likely, if you think about it for a few minutes, you can probably think of some areas in your life that regularly frustrate you, even though they're seemingly, you know, quote, simple. Write those down and then make a strategy for how you can reduce those friction points. This, you know, could boil down to setting aside some time to organize, you know, a space or items that are, you know, a source of pain and frustration to you. Or, you know, maybe it's something else that you can take the steps to fix it long term. Ultimately, if you can automate areas in your life that take up a lot of mental energy, you free yourself up to be able to operate in a more effective manner and accomplish more because your brain is not tied up with stuff that should be already organized or could be put into a routine or taken care of in a habit stack. So the more you can reduce those friction points in your life, the better off you're going to be in all the rest of the areas. The next thing that I would suggest that you do is do a time audit. So this one is not necessarily fun because you're going to have to face yourself. As much as we may think we know how much time we're spending on a particular activity or in a particular place doing a particular thing, that's a lot of times it's a little bit warped by our perception. And you have to be real and honest with yourself 
your screen time ain't gonna lie. If you're going to have the time to dedicate to your goals, your dreams, and your plans, and where God ultimately wants to take you, you need to have a good idea of where you're already spending your time so you can know where, what, and how you should cut stuff out. For example, I did a time audit on myself about a month ago and realized that I was spending about like four hours on social media every single day. Sure, you know, some of that's related to my job and I actually actually legitimately, you know, am on there working, but not that much on most days. So I have to be real with myself and ask myself, am I going to keep pandering to my lower, more carnal, less disciplined desires of fun? Or am I going to face myself and discipline it and cut it down and dedicate that time to working on a skill or something else that is actually a priority in my life? Yes, you need to make sure that you keep some time for rest and fun in your life. But don't allow yourself to keep giving excuses for not cutting something out under the guise of it being, quote, relaxing. Honestly, you need to keep your promises to yourself. And this is kind of a different discussion, but it does something psychologically when you break your promises to yourself because there's a disconnect from what you said you believe and what your actions are saying to yourself. Honestly, there's a lot of unnecessary stress and other mental things that happen that are rooted and fueled by that. But that's really a discussion for another day. So probably the easiest way to do a time audit on yourself is just get a whole bunch of sticky notes and write out what you do in a day. So like if you're awake for quote 16 hours a day, then you would have like 16 sticky notes and just, um, put on each sticky note what you did for an hour that day, or you could do it in, um, like 30 minute chunks if you wanted to and kind of divide up your day into 30 minute chunks and look where you're spending your time. And that's going to give you a lot of revelation on where you're bleeding time and where you could be more effective with what you're doing. Okay. So let's switch this up and talk about goal setting and kind of, you know, long-term success. So you, if no one's ever told you this before, need to have the big picture in mind. You need to spend some time to figure out your goals, dreams, plans, and then walk it back and see what you'll need to do to get there. You know, I mentioned this on a reel recently that if you don't know what you want then how are you going to know when you've gotten it or when you've gotten there and honestly that's kind of what goal setting and like the dream process looks like the first step is you know figuring out what you want um here in a minute I have a list of categories that can kind of jump start or be the launching pad for your creative juices and you can kind of put the specific goals under those categories but you're going to have to spend the time to make your goal list for yourself think about you know what do you want this month what do you want this year what do you want you know in the next couple of years of your life and it's okay if you don't know a hundred percent of everything that you want and where you're going but don't you dare use that as a excuse not to write down and plan out what you do know. Time is money, so when you waste it, you are robbing your future self. Okay, goal setting categories. I do need to preface this and say these aren't necessarily in the order of importance. Other than God himself, he always comes first. I'm going to go over these, but if you're not driving or doing something where you can't take notes, definitely write these down and plan on spending a good chunk of time later filling out the goal list for yourself. Honestly, you should have at least one big goal planning session with yourself per year and then definitely be reviewing those and adjusting those goals a minimum of every month. 
And you also need to be working these goals or the baby steps of these goals into like your weekly and daily schedule. So the first category is God. So this is like your prayer life, your Bible reading, all the spiritualities type of stuff. So whatever goals you have under that category. Number two, your fitness health. So this could be like running, you know, losing some weight or maybe um, being able to lift a specific amount of weight, eating healthy, um, setting a goal for, you know, getting enough sleep. There are so many subcategories under this, but it really boils down to you need to have goals for taking care of the temple of the Holy Ghost because you're responsible for being a steward of that. Okay, number three, self-development. So this could be reading books, improving a skill, um, learning a new hobby, or, you know, any other area that you need to develop yourself and improve yourself. Number four, education. So I know this kind of might overlap with self-development, but this is kind of more like college or high school, improving your grades, kind of more the more mainstream um, structured education. So you might have one or the other or both of these in your life. Number five, ministry. If you know your calling, then you need to take an evaluation of what you can be doing to hone your skills and make yourself more effective in your calling and in your ministry. Number six, your career. Ask yourself, what do you need to be doing to get that next raise? What about the promotion? Are you planning on switching careers? What are you you going to need to do for that? Do you want to start a business? All that sort of stuff falls under the career type stuff. So, you know, what do you want out of a career? Write out those goals. Number seven, your home. So this could be like redoing your kitchen or planting a garden. Basically anything to do with like the physical side of your dwelling space, whether it's, you know, an apartment, a house, whatever. Number eight, your family. So you could have a goal to spend more time with your loved ones, or maybe it's developing a stronger culture of family prayer, or, you know, maybe it's winning that lost cousin. Whatever, you know, those family goals are that you want to work on, write those out. Number nine, your marriage. And if you aren't already married yet, but you want to get married, then you need to be working on yourself so that you're ready when God does open the door for that to happen. You know, make a list of the books that you need to read in preparation for marriage. Listen to the podcast, do the counseling, you know, fast and pray, uproot whatever personal hindrances or things that you need to work through before getting into a relationship. So make a list of those goals and areas that you need to work on for your marriage. And if you are married, then, you know, maybe it's building a stronger relationship with your spouse in a particular area. You know, you know what those things are. And number 10 is your friends and other relationships. So you definitely want to be more intentional about connecting with them in a healthy way instead of just feeling like, oh, I should be doing these. So, you know, maybe these goals look like scheduling a bestie date every month or maybe it's writing letters or, you know, whatever that thing is that you need to set a goal in in that area, figure that out and write it down. And I do know that not every single one of these areas may necessarily apply to you you know what applies and what doesn't. Just make sure that all of the goal categories that do apply to you, that you're writing those out and writing those goals for yourself. And I'm not going to go in depth on motivation for fulfilling your goals 
but I will summarize it that you need to be able to define the why behind the what. So why are you setting these goals for yourself? Why do you want what you want? And that's going to help you a ton when it comes to staying committed and following through with those goals. And also when it comes to being and staying committed, often the most important time to follow through with something is when you don't feel like it. Why? Because when you're able to go from being dependent on operating and being motivated by your feelings to operating out of your commitment, regardless of how you feel, there is so much power. When you're able to do it anyway, even when you don't feel like it, something amazing happens and you become unstoppable. And really, there's just some growth that you're never going to be able to attain without conquering your motivation and commitment standards. Like, you have to be able to keep the promises to yourself. Because if you can't keep your promises to yourself, what makes you think you're going to keep promises to anybody else? Just saying. Okay, now let's wrap this all up. Kind of to put this into perspective, your time is kind of like a field. And yes... There are people who want fruit trees and fruit that they have not invested into cultivating long enough to achieve having those fruits. The law of sowing and reaping applies to time management too. And if you don't have intentionality and planning and everything else and putting nutritional value in crop rotation then don't be surprised if your field or your life looks like chaos and kind of side note but time management as a correlation to crop rotation is learning to have balance of the different categories in your life and not just binging on one thing for an extended period of time you need to have hard work but you also need to have rest you need to have things that stretch you intellectually but you also need to learn to trust god and you know dig into the spiritual depth side of things so have a balance in your life and whether you realize it or not you are working towards the life that you want right now notice i didn't say the life that you verbally tell yourself and others that you want but the life that you've committed to wanting at this point your actions speak louder than words and i'm not saying that words are irrelevant i'm just saying that your actions reveal the bare truth of where you are truly committed the bible says by their fruits you shall know them and by the fruit of your own actions your intentions are revealed to yourself you need to figure out what you truly want and then do it, not just say you're going to do it. Stay intentional, stay apostolic, and I will catch you guys next time. God bless.